and welcome to Urban Meadows, uh, your one-stop channel for all things hobby related. I'm changing the title. Um, today we're going to be doing the last in the series on the Tarot build. Uh, this is the um, uh, this is the la this is part four. Uh, the first part dealt with the basics, and the second part dealt with uh, installing the tarot. Third is the altitude in manual mode, and um, then we talked about the calibration on uh, on part three. And uh, on this mode, we're going to talk about the GPS hole uh, and and the return to home. Uh, the return to home and a lot of these fail-safe features are only available uh, when you have the uh, GPS uh, GPS enabled and functioning properly. And for those of you that have looked at part three, uh, getting the uh, getting support from uh, Taro, which is a which is a fairly big company, was a bit difficult. And maybe I didn't make my request clear, but uh, we did solve it, and it is working really well now. And so this video is there's really not much more to tell people for those that have followed this far and are using the tarot uh, you've uh, you the calibration may have been a challenge for you as well but once that is resolved the rest is pretty easy but I'm going to go over some of the uh, some of the things I did uh, to change the uh, to change the software so you'll see what my software settings are and you can compare with yours and and, uh, and I'll explain my understanding of what they do what they do and then we're going to do a bit of a flight video uh, to show you uh, how rock solid this, this, you're going to hear the wind noise. It is incredibly windy out and it was hard for me to hold this in place. But when I put my GPS hold on, um, she, once she found her bearings, she was rock solid. Um, you're also going to see some of the return to home, but it was really hard to videotape it because it, uh, my uh, return to home, I have it going up 20 meters, so I'm hoping that if there is a problem out in the field, I want it to try to clear up, uh, clear over at least some of the lower trees that we have, and it will uh, it will come back. But it was it was really um, uh, solid in its performance, even in these are the, the 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 least less than ideal. I would not fly this in the in the uh, weather that you're going to see videotape today, but. I wanted to bring closure because I want to move on to the uh, NAS32. You know, we started the video one. I want to do video the uh, uh, the future videos. I'm just waiting for some parts to come in, and I want to finish the videos on the QNAM uh, Nova, uh, which is which is going to be exciting. But as far as the build uh, build your own uh, quad goes, I don't think there's much to uh, show on the build. Um, basically, the controllers on the top. Uh, these are Velcroed in, that's sufficient. There's a zip tied in uh, because uh, I want to make sure that it, it doesn't move too much, but it, it's on foam. Uh, this is uh, Velcroed in place, uh, and this is uh, also Velcroed, the OSD, my camera. Uh, the camera is simply just a, a servo uh, with a, a camera stuck to it. I only need, actually, for the camera, I just need it to go up and down so I can keep it on the horizon, and I use one of my... Uh, one of my sliders on my uh, Tyrannus in order to control the uh, camera angle. Uh, I don't need any more than that. This is by far, I have I have tried a few other controllers including the P2. Um, with the P2, uh, I'm not going to go into that in detail. It was just very hard to get support uh, and it almost, it was not useful uh, to proceed with that product anymore because it was just too hard to, to get any support. The software uh, was not as refined as you would want, and I, I found that I, uh, it was wasting more time than it was uh, than moving on to a, a product that was had better support. This is really, uh, <clears throat> really a good product, uh, and uh, it has the controls for the landing gear and the gimbal already on. All you have to do is buy them and plug them in. So this is uh, this is a really good uh, controller. I want to thank uh, Mike who is a member of our club for all the support that he's given uh, with regards to supplying parts and, 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 and other entities because he, he has everything. Uh, so I'm able to uh, borrow uh, his product uh, to, uh, in order to make these, make these videos work. So um, 
Let's move on now and take a look at the software and okay, some of the so flight modes. Okay, let's take a look at the uh, final part of this uh, Taro uh, build process. This is uh, now looking at the Taro uh, ZYX-M assistant screen. And we're going to be looking at some of the advanced functions. Uh, you can see the overall, uh, the overall settings here that we have. We have our go home, how we're going home, uh, go home enabled. Uh, Intelligent orientation is off. Uh, that's headless mode. I, I don't plan to use it, uh, but I mean, for those that want to go into headless mode, this is something you may want to go in and play with. Um, and the voltages of when your alarms go off. It's kind of annoying for me because sometimes I, I'll put in a three, three cell battery and my alarms will go off. And uh, these are general settings. And what we're going to do is uh, just review the basics. We did the aircraft type. Mounting, um, I haven't adjusted any of the mounting because my um, multi-rotor is pretty much right in the center. But if we're a bit offset, I think for landing, um, it would be better to make sure that these are a little bit more precise. Uh, my receiver is conventional. Um, and I have all my switch settings uh, established, a three-position switch for my flight modes. And uh, the gain, I, I'm... I haven't touched any of this yet. Uh, uh, I don't know if there's a need. I'm, I'm not going to be going in there. And this is just the mapping of my of all the channels that I'm using. Uh, the one thing we are going to talk about is the uh, go home switch. I programmed a three position switch to be a two position switch. So it, uh, we'll talk a bit about that as we get into the advanced features. Uh, let's go to the advanced. Uh, the motor. I Played with this a bit, I didn't find it made any great difference, uh, but definitely I think it adjusts your uh, idle speed when you start your motors, but I certainly don't want anything getting too crazy. Uh, once I start my motors, I want to be able to shut them down for safety reasons. Uh, this is the uh, area that we're going to talk about uh, today. Uh, now that we have, uh, we, we now have the GPS calibrated, uh, and uh, you'll see a bit of that in the flight video as to um, uh, how that performs. Uh, we now look at what we're going to be doing in fail-safe mode. Uh, and there's two things we can do um, in fail-safe mode is uh, go uh, return to home, which will be activated by this one key uh, go home, or you can just have it hover. Fail-safe mode is mainly when you're losing connection with your receiver. Uh, so you can choose. I decided that I'm going to go for the go home mode. This is the go home altitude. Uh, you'll see in the video that it was pretty hard to track because it, it escalated up to 20 meters uh, pretty high when we turned on the uh, go home switch. Uh, but uh, you, you'll, you'll get an idea of, 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 of how that works. Uh, go home heading. Uh, we decided that we'd, we'd go home backwards. The, 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 the craft will go, in, go home in the backwards position, not turn around and come towards you. Um, that allows me, when I take control of it, to know that when I push forward, it'll, it'll go away. I've uh, reversed the switch um, uh, so that it was it started up in standby mode. And I just took a three position switch on my Tyrannus and programmed it to be a um, two position switch in under servos. Uh, so I've enabled my go home. That's the big one uh, that you'll want to program um, uh, in order to um, make sure that you're not going to lose your devices. Head tracking, I don't have that uh, enabled. Um, so it is uh, course lock. It's you got to know what the directionality is of it, as with any headless type mode. Voltage, we've already talked about this in the basic. I'm using a uh, four cell uh, rating. Uh, and these are my uh, warning voltages. Um, it gets annoying because sometimes I, I could put in a large three cell and I'll get warnings right away and it'll it'll try to go into that's why I put in LED warnings rather than the warnings and go home landing uh, because um, uh, the if for, for different cells it'll just start coming home automatically and if you don't know exactly what's going on it can be it can be pretty scary uh, limits uh, flight limits this is your altitude and your radius and this is for gear, if you have gear. Sometime in the future, uh, maybe I, uh, a friend of mine has the gear. I may install it and take a look at it. 
these are your tools for adjusting your gyroscope and accelerometer. Uh, and this has all been discussed in the previous videos and as well as uh, info for upgrading your firmware, which has been done. Don't forget always to write flash uh, when you're doing any of these activities. Okay, those are the parameters that I used when I changed the, um, changed the uh, software uh, when I programmed the uh, flight controller. Uh, not, much, uh, not much change, but you need to uh, kind of play around uh, with what settings you like best. Like I said, 20 meters is, is pretty low if you're trying to go over trees, but uh, you kind of find out from your environment. If you're flying on a field, 20 meters is, is plenty high enough. Uh, and also the direction, how it's going to come back. And people may want to look at the IOC or the head tracking mode and maybe use that. Uh, because once it gets out there, um, other than return to home, there's really no way of knowing what the orientation is uh, when, it's, when it's pretty far away. So... Uh, those are things to consider. Now let's take a look at some of the uh, flight video that we did uh, to show the um, uh, how this baby operates. Okay, here we go. Test flight. We're going to start off with altitude hold. I go to manual mode. But it's too hard to control, and it's breezy out. And uh, we'll just take her up. And Now I'm going to go up here now, and I'm going to put on the altitude hold, GPS hold, sorry, the GPS hold is on, you can see it's biting, it'll click in there in a minute, it should stabilize, we have a great, great GPS, uh, GPS hold, fantastic, it's waiting hard against that wind, I'm not touching anything, Okay, well, uh, that's that's it for the tarot part four. This is the uh, final final uh, video in this series. I hope you've enjoyed it, and if you did, please say like. And if you want to see more of these types of videos, please subscribe uh, uh, to to my channel. Uh, certainly, uh, uh, the more we uh, the more subscribers we have, the more videos uh, we can produce, and the more product that we'll get. Um, it's you know hard for me to find the balance of actually doing the videos building and flying, uh, but uh, I'm, I'm managing to get it all done. So thank you very much for your time, and I uh, will see you next time at Emerald Meadows. Bye-bye. <laughs>